Did you know that Jimmy Bruin was the original Matthew Wolf? I had no idea until I created this video about Miller Barber and Eamon Darcy and then happened to see this guy Jimmy Bruin with an interesting looking swing. So I checked it out and I mean it's just amazing and you'll see what I mean in a second. So this was a bit from the Golf Channel that was uploaded by Golf Grouch. What a great name. Comparing the swings and they asked George Gankus about how Matthew Wolf generates power in his swing. And not surprisingly, he said, big shoulder turn and ground and working with the ground. Now, before ground reaction forces became a popular topic in golf, the answer would have just been he takes a big shoulder turn and uncoils, which of course has no meaning in human physiology. I mean, well, the coiling part that is. Humans don't coil or uncoil. All right, so that's just not how humans move. So let me, I'll explain what that means at the end of this video, but for, but for right now, let's look at Jimmy's swing, and we're going to look at his swing as it was uploaded by Tony Bruin, who is Jimmy's son. And so here is the video, and you can see down below one of the first comments. So this Shane Donahue said, this is a tribute that I put together. So Shane Don, we can thank Shane Donahue, who put this tribute to Jimmy Bruin together for the British Open at 2008. Okay, so let's look at this. Oh, yeah, and, and O'Donohue's book was called Legends in Their Spare Time. So he was an amateur golfer. And he died, unfortunately, at 50, age 51. And he was born in 1920, died in 1951, and Matthew Wolf wasn't born until 1999. So the odds that Matthew Wolf goes, I think I'll copy Jimmy Bruin's swing is like so remote. It's not even worth you know figuring out what the odds might be of that. So let's watch Jimmy swing. Jimmy Bruin was hugely powerful as a, as a man, but he also his impact was, was superb. And the, the flair in his swing gave him even more power. He was a, a genius. He won the now that flail he's talking about is his his arms. Because he has such a high elbow, that means that we anyone anytime you have a, a high elbow and it's pejoratively called a flying elbow, it gives you more time to get your body moving through the ball so that your arms can follow more efficiently afterwards because your the club has a longer path to follow if the elbow is high. And so uh, I think that's Christy O'Connor. He has called it a flail, which is, it really isn't the right word because a flail is sort of a inconsistent just, well, if you, I don't, look up the definition of flail and a flail is just some uncoordinated movement typically is, 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 is how the word is used. So let's keep listening to O'Connor talk about him. And then he worked out, and they still talk about the places he hit his drive stroke. But Jimmy was better than normal. He had the, the huge high back swing with the club anywhere but online. But he look at that! Isn't that incredible? <laughs> so just amazing. I wish I could do this, but I my golf swing motor program is 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 so ingrained now, and it does not let me make this cross the line move. If I could. I would, but I can't, so I don't. So I do the best I can otherwise, as I've described in previous videos. But if I could do this, I would do it in a heartbeat. Because once you get the, the, the body out of the way, look how much more room you have and time you have to move your body so that your arms and club can follow. So if you can, if your motor program isn't super established, I try to learn how to swing with the higher elbow if I, if I was uh, learning how to play, play golf currently. Dropped it right back into position, and his impact was absolutely superb. And you can see how non how nonviolent this move was. So nonviolent, just beautiful. Was absolutely superb. He went out and he took a, a six, a seven iron with him, and he went to the caddy up to the practice ground. And the caddy didn't move; he was just picking the ball up left and right. He was so accurate. He's the most wonderful pair of hands I've ever seen in the golf club. I'm delighted to. So. Olaf Alba comes on and talks about how he won the same amateur events that uh, Bruin won, but it would have been like, what, 50 years earlier or 40 years earlier. So let's go to the end and get Faldo's commentary on the swing. And I can tell you right from the start, unfortunately for Nick, it was a bit dismissive. And the reason why is because it's unconventional. And so the conventional types, the orthodox thinkers, the boilerplate thinkers, which Faldo is one of them, and by the way, his swing is amazing, but when teaching and talking about the golf swing, he has limited understanding of movement science. So he so he speaks within the you know the small boilerplate concept of of the golf swing. So watch what he says. 
Dorian, do you follow, do you follow these great? A few. I've got a few old books with some great old swings. Yeah, but it I was, was a swing, wasn't it? A bit of a loop that was there. a bit of a that made Darcy look conventional. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how you get some serious whip. I guess. Yeah. Okay, so you can see he said that he basically kind of made fun of the guy. So oh, that makes Darcy look conventional. Well, if you compare Darcy's swing to Jimmy Bruin's swing, Jimmy Bruin's swing is far more fluid and graceful, beautiful. But Faldo doesn't get it because he has a traditional swing. So this is what Faldo and George Gankus should have said about these swings. And this is what, what I'm going to show you next is what every teaching pro and analyst and touring pro should say when asked about how they get power. So how do you get power in the golf swing? Nick, Jimmy, Matt, whoever. Well, I am a pro and I have professional movement skills, which allows me to create elastic energy. And then I effectively transfer momentum from larger to smaller segments. If we, could, if we could go back and ask Arnold Palmer, Arnold, how did you get so much power? I effectively created elastic energy and then transferred momentum from my larger to smaller segments. That is the answer to every time you're asked, how does this golfer get power? Well, they transfer momentum. So momentum is defined as mass times velocity. Mass is defined as... Momentum is defined as mass times velocity. So you can see the legs and hips, big mass, small velocity. Trunk and shoulders, smaller mass, bigger velocity. Arms, much smaller mass, much faster velocity. And then hands and club, super small mass, massive velocity. So if the mass and velocity of the hips is transferred effectively, this is how there's such as massive club head speed at impact. And this is how power is generated no matter who you are as a golfer, as a professional golfer, I'm saying professional because us amateurs, we don't sequentially move like this. Pros do. So professional golfers, baseball players, hockey players, field hockey, any pro swinging an implement, if they do it professionally in a professional level, they transfer momentum in this fashion. So I have an entire chapter about power generation where I discuss momentum transfer and elastic energy creation in more detail. You can check out it. You can check it out in my book, or go online and look for more information about elastic energy and momentum transfer, because there's lots of spots on the internet. If you want to check out my book and what else is in it, you can just go right over to Amazon, put in the title of the book, it'll come up. You can look inside, and if you have a subscription, I don't, even, I don't know if this is a Prime or not, but if you if you have Kindle Unlimited, look at how much it'll cost you to check out the power generation chapter. It'll cost you nothing. Otherwise, ten bucks for the Kindle, twenty five bucks for the paperback.